but that's the reality of the Sinn Féin position. That's the reality of the Sinn Féin position. The problem with that, the problem with that narrative from Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin and the um, the Socialist Party, they uh, they, they voted against. Okay. Talking Hold about the hard left in Sinn Féin. Oh, Mr. Does. Adams said, Mr. Adams said, if Sinn Féin were in government. You know, a tax bomb would come through people's letterbox. <laughs> they will say anything, lie about anything to get them through <sighs> okay. a, a debate like this. All right. There's a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of people really suffering. And I think that when you speak to them, you realise that they're just about keeping their heads above water. Some of them aren't at this stage now. They're really worried about the water tax coming down the road. They can't take any more. And the youth guarantee that Emer talks about, it's grossly underfunded. It does nothing. I've worked out in Ballymun for a couple of years as a community worker there. It does nothing for the, the early school leavers. There is no, uh, nothing for the 10,000 people with disabilities. There's nothing for young parents. So it's, it's lip service once again from the Fine Gael and Labour government. But you can't deny, Lynn, that things are getting better, that because we see more job creation happening in the last number of months than we have done over the last couple of years, that's surely a sign that things are on the turn. There's 25,000 fewer young people in employment since Fianna Gael and Labour came to government. That's the reality. If you go outside of Dublin, one in four families have lost somebody to emigration. They're relying on emigration as a pressure valve. So you have a choice to either get coerced into doing a mandatory job bridge scheme or have your benefits cut or else leave the country. They're the options for young people today. Now, you and your party have said a number of times that you can save Ireland's economic woes without costing people or causing people too much economic pain, but how do you pay for it? We have, over the last number of years, put forward costed alternative budgets, costed by the Department of Finance, to show that there are always choices about how you make the same adjustment to the deficit, but by doing it without crippling families. And that's what we've done every year, but Fine Gael and Labour refuse to accept that. They refuse to accept that there are choices. And I think that's why Sinn Féin's message is resonating with people out there, because they know there has to be choices. When you see Richie Boucher Hayes on 843,000 and the government signing off on that pay salary, and then I go to a woman who's 82 who's told that there's no funding for a ramp for her and she's confined to her house, there's no fairness there, and people know that. And that's why they're looking for an alternative. And I think they believe Sinn Féin is that alternative. Okay, Brian Hayes, what about that's that? all good news. But Sinn Féin say that they have costed, with the Department of Finance, ways of doing things, ways of getting us back on a sound economic footing, ways that you could have chosen that you opted not to choose. Well, well Sinn Féin didn't send, as I understand, to the Department of Finance at their pre-budget submission to be independently costed. So when Lynn says that, she's not well, telling the truth. Can I just right, you, hear yes, can, yeah. uh, either Brian is lying outright or else he doesn't know what's happening in his own department because I have here the letter from the Department of Finance no. which says that Sinn Féin's alternative budget was costed no, by you your own department. No, you don't. What you, have in, in what, what, what you sent to the Department of Finance was a number of questions. You cut and pasted the replies no. that came back from those questions and you added up the total. Confidential the notion, costings the notion, of proposals, the, sorry, Brian. Repeat, I enclosed the, the costings. The were available the notion, the notion, the notion, the notion, the costings. Lynn, was just that Brian Shin, finished? Shin, Shin what, what Brian Hayes is saying is Sinn Féin's proposals would cost £28 billion in extra taxes. Look, Brian Hayes refuses to even cost a wealth tax. Minister Noonan stood on the floor of the Dáil and said that a wealth tax could bring in anything up to 500 million euros. They refuse to cost it in their own department, Claire. but they have no problem introducing universal social charges, water taxes, universal health taxes, Claire. property taxes, that not one cent went into okay. the Sinn local authority. Took, Sinn Féin On took the issue out. of groupings, I want to talk about the group that you would join if, if you joined, uh, if you were elected as an MEP, the European United United Left, Nordic Green Left. Yeah. It only had 35 members this time round. What, what good is that? I mean, well, how strong is it? On, on the basis of the current polls across Europe, we'd be set to be the, the third largest grouping, which would mean we'd actually hold a balance of power. We'd be very influential. But what I wanted to come back in, Claire, was Brian talks a good talk. But the reality is that they have failed. They have not got bank recapitalisation. We heard two years ago we were getting bank recap. We haven't seen a red cent of it. The European Globalisation Fund, which was supposed to be there <coughs> to help people who are most affected by the recession, the government had to send 50% of it back because they failed to adequately use it. He's failing again on the European Investment Bank. I can constantly ask him this. No. Why are we drawing down less funds from the European Investment the figures, Bank? than all of the other struggling Eurozone countries. So we do we really
really believe that Brian's going to go out to Europe now and suddenly be a champion when he hasn't been able to do it when he's in Leinster well, House. Well, I'll, I'll hand my record uh, To address what Paul was saying, I mean, it seems that you share a lot of common ground, the Socialist Party and the Sinn Féin Party. Do you agree? Well, I think what Sinn Féin is putting forward its own platform and what I'm getting from people when you're out meeting them is that they really like the representation they're getting from their TDs in Leinster House, the Sinn Féin TDs. They like that they're calling the government to account. They're asking the questions they want to ask, the, pe the people want to be asking themselves. And what they want is... But are you quite closely yeah, aligned they, with, with Paul's message? We're in the same group, but what we want to do as an MEP, I want to give the strong voice that our TDs give in Leinster House. I want to do that in Brussels. The same people are crying out for representation. They've been burnt by the political system in this country. They've been let down, particularly by Labour, and they want somebody standing up there and championing for them. And that's what I'm putting myself forward to do. I'm asking people to give me the chance to prove that I can give them a good representation in Dublin by putting jobs on the, on the agenda constantly from the European Parliament and every opportunity I have to call for a job stimulus package and a change of direction of the okay. European okay. Union. Problem with that. Our time is up. Thank you all very much indeed for being with us. Yeah. And the best of luck to you all.